YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day thus far. In this particular video, we are going to be going over the tiers of importance when we talk about building muscle. Because there are, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I actually forgot how many there were, so I had to count them up. I don't think you're that unintelligent. Man, I'm really showing my IQ. I had to count them up because I forgot how many there was going to be. But <clears throat> there are eight things that we are going to cover here in this video that are the eight essentially most important things that you are going to need to have in order to build muscle. And I'm going to break them up into, obviously, as you can see, three different tiers. We're going to start with the most important tier. Then going to tier number two, which is like the middle intermediate tier. Then going to tier number three, which is the least important tier. And I will say right now, I think you are going to be, whether call it shocked or whether surprised at where I put some things in each tier. You might think that something in tier three might need to go in tier one, or something in tier one might be going in tier two and vice versa. So just stick around for that because yes, I'm gonna cover the most important ones first just because I think that uh, you know people will tell you, ah, you should put your best stuff at the end in a YouTube video because people will watch it all the way. Well, you know, listen, man, like if you wanna learn about this shit, you can watch it all the way through. I hope you do watch it all the way through, but I wanna make sure you leave this video learning something and gaining some sort of knowledge you can take with you to make your workouts better and build more muscle. Now, I will say as well, even though I'm gonna break it up into different tiers, and even though you might be like, oh shit, I thought you know this was gonna go in tier number one, but it's in tier number three and vice versa, I will say to this too, a lot of these things are gonna be kind of intertwined, which is also I think is why you should probably watch the whole video because there's gonna be some nuance to each, each one of these things. So just know, even if I put something right here versus right here and vice versa, they really all matter, otherwise I wouldn't even be bringing them up. It's just some are gonna matter more than others, but it's all kinda gonna be intertwined, all right? So without further ado, let's hop into the first most important, in my opinion, most important thing when it comes to building muscle. The first and foremost thing that's gonna be put at the very top of the tier, and tier number one is going to be intensity. Now, let me define what I mean when I say intensity. I do not mean getting your heart rate super high. I do not mean taking very short rest periods and trying to burn as many calories as humanly possible. I do not mean uh, taking 30 second breaks in between your sets to keep your heart rate super high. When I talk about intensity, I mean lifting heavy enough weight for the amount of reps that you are doing, which we're gonna talk about reps here in a very brief second, but lifting heavy enough weight for the reps that you are trying to complete. Meaning, you should be going one to three reps shy of failure. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a few videos here that you're gonna be able to watch kind of, you know, and I can talk through, but I'm gonna put a few videos here where you can kind of see my sets. And I really want you to start to, when you're watching these, start to look at the last couple of reps. The easiest way to know if you are going close to failure, which you should be going, there's something called RIR, which is reps in reserve. You should be going one to three reps shy of actually failing to where you literally cannot do another rep. You should be going one to three reps shy of that because that's the RIR, reps in reserve. One to three reps in reserve. Going one to three reps shy of failure, that's the stimulus that your body needs in order to basically tell your body, hey, body, we need to build muscle. We need to make an adaptation because remember, your body doesn't know whether you're trying to lift weights or getting chased by a mountain lion or whatever it is, it just knows stress. So you need to put a stress great enough on your body in order to elicit that adaptation response. And again, the way you do that is you need to have proper intensity. So you need to be going close enough to failure in order to have that happen. And the best way to know if you are going close to failure or not, and if you're having enough intensity or not, is simply 
this right here. You're seeing the last couple of reps of my sets are involuntarily slowing down. You probably saw on that one row machine, like the last one or two reps, I was kind of like going up like this, right? The first couple of reps were just kind of like, you know, good, solid, simple reps. But the last rep or two, I was really going slow on the way up. Not because I was trying to go slow on the way up. I, I was trying to move the weight fast. I was trying to move the weight explosively, but I couldn't, AKA involuntarily. My reps were involuntarily slowing down. That means I was getting close to failure. So let's just say I was trying to do eight reps on that set. The sixth, seventh, and eighth rep. Those three reps, started to slow down on the concentric portion, which the concentric portion just means like when you're actually performing the movement. So like on the way up of a squat or on the way up of a bicep curl or on the way back of a row, when you're actually performing the movement. If your last couple of reps are involuntarily slowing down because your muscles are just getting close to failure, that's how you know that you are lifting with enough intensity. If that's not happening, you need to lift heavier weight for the rep range that you are doing. Because remember, the term heavy is relative, right? What you can do for five reps, you can lift heavier weight for five reps than you can for 10 reps on any given exercise. If you're doing a squat, you can lift more weight on five reps on a squat because you don't have to do as many reps. Then you would have to, you know, the weight you would lift for 10 reps would have to be less, right? That doesn't mean though, it still can't be heavy for the rep range that you are looking for. So no matter what reps you are doing, you should be working to one to three reps shy of failure for that set. And yes, that is every working set. So before you ask me, Eric, is this every set? Is this the last set? Every working set should be taken close to failure. If you don't know what a working set is or what the difference between a working set and a warm-up set is, listen to the podcast. I will link here below in the description of this video. It goes over every single thing you need to know about working sets versus warm-up sets. But every single working set needs to be one to three reps shy of failure. That's how you know you are having proper intensity. And this is why you should probably record yourself when you work out and at least get some videos because you'll be able to see are your last couple of reps slowing down on the way up? If they're not, you need to lift heavier weight. So that is the first part, which then kind of bleeds into the next part. Conversely, we can talk about volume. And when I talk about volume, this is gonna mean the amount of sets per muscle group per week, okay? So let's just say, for example, you're doing a lower body workout and you're thinking about your glutes, right? Let's say for your glutes, you did a hip thrust for three sets of six to eight reps. Let's say you did a Bulgarian split squat for three sets of six to 10 reps. And let's say you did an RDL for two sets of six to 10 reps, okay? You did three sets for the glute, for the hip thrust, three sets for the Bulgarian split squat, two sets for the RDL. That would be eight sets per muscle group, your glutes, eight sets per muscle group for that workout. And again, all eight of those sets are working sets. And the reason these are in tier one and tier two, and honestly the two most important things is because they kind of go hand in hand and they kind of like converse each other, right? You could have the most intensity in the world and you could be going lifting to failure every single set. But if you're only doing two sets, AKA the volume, if you're only doing two sets, well then no, you're not gonna build any muscle, right? Conversely, you could have all the volume in the world. You can do all the sets, all the reps, every single thing, but if you don't lift with enough intensity, it doesn't matter how much volume you're doing, you're not gonna be able to build muscle because you're not gonna be eliciting that adaptation response. So these two things, they kind of go hand in hand and they are by far the two most important things when you are looking to build muscle. Now, how many sets per muscle group per week should you be looking to hit? Well, we basically break this up into two different ways. 
And by the way, the things I'm about to tell you are just, they're, they're very good recommendations, okay? They're very good general guidelines. Some people might need more, some people might need less. These are just very general guidelines, okay? But for bigger muscle groups, think your quads, think your chest, think your glutes, think your hamstrings, your lats and back. You typically, if you want to grow and improve that muscle group, you're probably gonna end up between anywhere between 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And again, that is working sets. So for bigger muscle groups, if you wanna improve, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And we're gonna talk about like how, to, how you would potentially break that up here in a second, so stick with me. But that is for bigger muscle groups. For smaller muscle groups, think like, biceps, think like triceps, think like uh, rear delts, all that kind of stuff. You typically wanna be hitting around somewhere between that four to 10 mark. This is where, again, I've seen people get by with like two or three sets. I've, I've seen some people need, you know, 10 to 12 sets. This just really just kind of depends. But I will say this, especially for like the smaller muscle groups, two things. The reason you don't need as much volume on the smaller muscle groups is because think about a chest press, right? When you are doing a chest press, you are working your triceps. Is it the main muscle group? No, but you still are working your tricep because when you perform elbow extension, that needs your tricep to make elbow extension. So you don't need as much volume on biceps, triceps, things of that nature because you're already working it to an extent in your bigger muscle groups. And if you're hitting your 10 to 20 sets for your big, bigger muscle groups, you will be hitting some volume in those smaller muscle groups as well. On top of that, they just don't need that, that much volume to grow. Like if you are doing, let's take biceps for example. If you do two to three sets of biceps on one upper body day, and then two to three sets of biceps on your second upper body day, and you lift with enough intensity and you actually take those movements very close to failure, for most people, that is probably gonna be enough for you to grow your biceps. Now, again, it depends on your training level and like some people might need more, whatever, whatever. But for most people, that's gonna be enough to make some progress progress with your biceps. So just know your smaller muscle groups don't need as much work to them. And remember as well, if let's say, you know, you're not trying to really bring up a body part and let's say you're really not trying to build muscle in a specific body part because either you're not like specializing on that or maybe you just don't want to bring that muscle group up, you know, you could do like, let's say you do um, two sets of biceps for the entire week. Cool, that would be enough to like maintain your muscle, right? That's the thing too. What you need to maintain your muscle is way, way less than what you need to grow your muscle. So, you know, if you're somebody who maybe you don't care about building your chest or you don't care about building your biceps or whatever it is, you could maybe put way less volume on those areas to then be able to put more volume on your glutes or your quads or your chest or your back or whatever it is. So those two things go hand in hand. We're also gonna talk about how many reps should you do and how many times per week should you work out? We're going to touch on that somewhere here. Who knows what, who knows what tier it's going to be in. But the third factor in tier number one is going to be something called progressive overload. Now, I've done an entire video on progressive overload on this channel. I will link it here somewhere up here. There should be a little info card up there if you want to check it out after this video. But all progressive overload essentially means is you're doing more over a period of time. Remember how I talked about uh, your body needs a stress that is great enough on it to elicit and kind of trigger that adaptation response, right? Progressive overload, let's just say, you know, uh, when you first started working out, you were lifting 10 pounds for three sets of 10. If you were still lifting 10 pounds for three sets of 10 six months later, guess what? You are not going to be building any muscle at all, essentially, because your body has already adapted to that. So it has no reason to keep adapting to what it's already adapted to. Remember, your body doesn't wanna build muscle. It really could give two fucks about building muscle. Your body wants to maintain homeostasis and just stay the exact same. You wanna build muscle. So you need to give your body a reason in order to 
elicit that adaptation response and elicit that muscle building response. And the way you do that is, you know, mainly these three things right here. And they all, again, kind of go hand in hand. They all kind of go hand in hand because intensity, having proper intensity, pushing close to failure, that probably means you're going to be having progressive overload. Progressive overload, because you're lifting more weight, doing more reps over a period of time, you're going to increase the volume as well because you're having progressive overload. So all these things go hand in hand and really quickly one last note on progressive overload this doesn't have to be massive these can be just like hand over fist gains like honestly every single week like remember let's say you did three sets of eight reps for 50 pounds right that was on week one you could do something like week two three sets of nine at 50 pounds week three three sets of 10 at 50 pounds once you get to 10 reps Let's say you drop the reps back down to eight reps, and let's say you increase the weight you are lifting. So you did three sets of 10 at 50 pounds, now you're doing three sets of eight at 55 pounds. That would be a form of progressive overload. You added reps up to a degree, and then you went back down and added uh, weight, and you can just kind of keep doing that. Or let's say, for example, week one, you're doing three sets of eight at 50 pounds. Let's say week two, you did one set of nine at 50 pounds and then two sets of eight at 50 pounds. Let's say week three, one set of eight at 50 pounds. Week four, all three sets at nine reps. All you did was add one rep to one set each week. But guess what? That is progressive overload and that will be enough for your body to elicit that adaptation response. So you don't have to add five or 10 pounds every single time you work out. Will you do that, especially in the beginning? You probably will be able to, but eventually you won't be able to do that. So just know any way that you do more, as long as you're doing more over a period of time. And listen, some weeks you might not even do that. Usually you can always add at least one rep on one set, but even if you can't do that, it's not just a one week period of time. You can also look at it over the course of a month. Are you doing more over the course of a month? And when we're talking about progressive overload for muscle building in particular, you're gonna wanna add the three main ways you have progressive overload. Adding reps up to a degree, which we can touch on here in a second, adding reps up to a degree, adding weight, right? So lifting more weight or adting sets, right? So let's just say, for example, you're at a weight and a rep where you can't, like you can't do more yet, but maybe you could do one more set. Cool, maybe you could tack on one more set, which would then increase your overall weekly volume because you're increasing your sets per muscle group per week. So you're increasing your overall weekly volume, which would be adding progressive overload over the course of time. Now again, there is gonna be a point of diminishing returns. You can't just do endless reps and endless sets like forever and ever. There gets to a point where you're gonna actually have diminishing returns, which is why I said following that volume, uh, people are like, oh, I'll just add more sets. Only to a degree, because after you pass these landmarks of volume, there's not gonna be much return on that and it actually will probably give you worse returns. It, won't, it will not give you returns, and it'll actually take away from you in the long run. So progressive overload, that's the third most important thing when we talk about tier number one. We have closed out tier number one. What is in tier number two? Let's find out. So as I mentioned earlier, some of these things are gonna go hand in hand, but I do believe there are tiers. And so starting out the second tier is gonna be frequency. And this just means how many days are you working out per week? More specifically, how many days are you working out for that muscle group? And what is gonna be most optimal if you're trying to optimize your muscle building is going to be working out your muscle groups two times per week. Why is this? For two main reasons. Number one, this is going to allow you to have a higher of something called muscle protein synthesis, which just for the very easy terms, think of like muscle protein synthesis as, uh, as the way your body recovers from workouts and builds new muscle. Okay. So when you're only hitting your muscle groups one time a week, like the bro split where you do like legs on Monday and chest on Tuesday and back on Wednesday and arms on Friday, shoulders on, th like when you're doing that, you're only hitting your muscle groups one time a week. So what happens is you have a big spike in muscle protein synthesis and then it drops down for another six days and you don't get another spike in muscle protein synthesis. Whereas let's say you do upper body on Tuesday, 
upper body on Friday. On Tuesday, you have a spike in muscle protein synthesis. It's still spiked up on Wednesday, starting to come back down on Thursday. But Friday, you spike it up again. So it's spiked up Saturday, spiked up Sunday, starting to come back down Sunday and Monday, but you're working out upper body on Tuesday. So these higher, these more frequent muscle protein synthesis spikes can be beneficial for muscle building. And number two, I talked earlier about how you're going to want 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week, especially for your bigger uh, muscle groups, right? What I didn't tell you was, and here's where I keep secrets, until right now, I'm going to give you the secret. What I didn't tell you was, you can only take but so much volume for one muscle group in a single session. So again, I talked about point of diminishing returns. Studies show roughly once you get to around that like eight, 10 up to 12 max sets per muscle group per workout, you start to have diminishing returns after that. So let's just say, for example, I'll use the glutes example again. You did hip thrust for three sets, Bulgarian split squat for three sets, RDL for two sets. That's eight total sets. If you tried to add a glute kickback for three sets and like I don't know, you, you did a step up for three sets, okay? You just now added six more sets. That would be 14 sets of glutes for that workout. That is gonna be diminishing returns. You are not going to build muscle from that workout session because again, you hit the bell curve. It, you can add sets, but once you get past a certain point, the sets are going to, uh, again, bring you back, honestly, no gains. And so knowing that, let's just say roughly, we don't wanna go over 10 sets per workout, but we're trying to get 10 to 20 sets per week, well, now you essentially have to break up your muscle groups into two times per week because if you're trying to go above 10 sets, you can't do that in one workout. You can do up to 10, but then once you get to 10, it's kind of the max, right? So what do we do? Split it up into two times per week. So something like a four day a week, lower, upper, lower, upper split. You're training all your muscle groups two times per week. You're hitting the two times per week frequency, and you can hit that 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week without going over your total uh, volume that is gonna you know, bring you diminishing returns without going over that point in one single workout session, if that makes sense. So frequency is really a tool for volume. I, I, I didn't mention this as well, but I can mention this again. When you are talking about frequency and hitting your muscle groups two times per week, this is also to help with intensity because if you actually, and this is where, again, I talked about working sets, if you do eight working sets of a muscle group in a single workout, you are going to be absolutely gassed. And when you start to get that high in volume, what's gonna end up happening is your intensity is gonna start to decrease. You won't be able to keep up as high of intensity as you need in order to see progress. And so what's gonna happen is, again, you'll be doing volume, but it'll be something called junk volume, where you're doing work, but it's not really intense enough work in order to see progress. This is why like, some people, they'll work out for two hours in a gym, two, three, four, five, six, seven days a week week and not see any progress. Why? They're doing junk volume. They're doing work, but it's not work that's actually going towards muscle building. It's just work their body has to like recover from. Their body's like, what the fuck is going on? Why is this person doing this? I don't even know. But like, I guess we gotta, we gotta recover from this, but we're not gonna put it towards muscle building because you don't have the proper intensity. So that's why frequency is at the top of tier number two. The next part in tier number two is the amount of reps you are doing. And I put this in here because to be quite frank with you, you can build muscle in any rep range. You can build muscle in the one to five rep range. You can build muscle in the six to 12 rep range. You can build muscle in the 12 to 20 plus rep range. Now, there is going to be a best rep range for building muscle though. And I've actually done an entire video here on YouTube. I'll link it up there uh, again as well. I've done an entire video on why what I'm about to say is what I'm about to say. So I won't go super in depth on it, but the best rep range for building muscle is probably gonna be in that six 
to 12 rep range. And if you want a quick synopsis as to why, again, you can build muscle in the one to five rep range. And I believe you should be doing exercises in the one to five rep range, or probably more so the three to six rep range. In all of my programs I write, whether it's for one of my clients or whether it's for any of the members in the clubhouse, I incorporate three to six reps, especially on bigger compound movements like squats, deadlifts, you know, overhead press, bench press, those sort of things. We will incorporate some lower rep, higher strength work, higher weight work, but if you were to make the majority of your workouts and, and exercises in the, in the one to six rep range, eventually the volume that you're going to need to accumulate in order to build muscle, it's gonna break down your joints, your connective tissue, your ligaments, your tendons, all that stuff, as well as it's very taxing on your central nervous system to be able to recover from all of that work. So that's one to six reps. Now, let's say you're doing 12 to 20 reps. Again, you can build muscle in that rep range technically as long as you go close to failure, but what's gonna happen is your intensity, the weight you're lifting is gonna be so low and what's gonna happen also is you are gonna start to get into a scenario where you are doing more of muscular endurance and or cardiovascular work than you are with actually muscle building work. Because since the sets are going for so long, if you're doing 15, 20, 30 reps, the sets are going for so long, before you get to muscular failure, you will get to cardio failure or muscular endurance failure. So for that reason, six to 12 reps seems to be in that sweet spot rep range to where you wanna have most of your training come from if you're looking to build muscle. Again, it's not to say you can't do reps in the one to six rep range or you can't do some sets in the 12 to 20 rep range, but for the most part, you're probably looking to stick around that six to 12 rep range. Now, the third part in tier number three is actually going to be recovery. And this is important because I talked earlier about how does your body change? Your body changes through, you put a stress on your body, your body recovers from that stress first and foremost, and then it adapts to that stress. But if you don't recover, you can't ever get to the adaptation stage. And the adaptation stage is where you actually change and build muscle. But if you can't recover, you're not gonna get to the adaptation stage. So recovery, most people don't understand this. In your workouts, you're not building muscle in your workouts. You are literally tearing your muscle fibers apart when you are doing your workouts. That's not when you change your body. You change your body outside of the workouts, when you recover and repair your muscles for those workouts. You could talk about recovery in so many different aspects. The main ways I'm talking about recovery are sleep. Number one, first and foremost, getting seven to nine hours of sleep per night is gonna be a massive key and a massive beneficial help for you building muscle. Can you build muscle on five hours of sleep? Sure, you can. It's gonna be substantially harder though. The second thing I talk about when I think of recovery is having enough rest days in between your workouts, especially for the same muscle groups. Let's take a four day a week, lower, upper, lower, upper split. When you are doing this kind of split, I would strongly encourage you to have something like a Monday, Tuesday, rest, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday split because you are you need to make sure you give your muscle groups at least 48 hours of recovery in between those sessions. And so if you're doing lower body on Monday, you want to wait till at least Wednesday, if not Thursday, to be able to get in that muscle group again. So this way, if you're splitting it up in that way, you will be able to give your muscle groups at least 48 hours of recovery, which if you don't do that, it's gonna impair what we talked about earlier, which is muscle protein synthesis, right? So if you're impairing muscle protein synthesis, you will not be able to recover and repair your muscles, which then means you won't be able to create change. So giving your muscle groups 48 hours of recovery in between each workout. This also talks about protein. This also talks about overall nutrition with overall calories, which we will talk about. Oh, I guess it's, there's not many tiers left, but we'll talk about in the next tier. And this also refers to resting between 
your sets. This is a very important thing right here. If you are looking to optimize muscle building, it is going to be in your best interest to rest for anywhere between two to five minutes in between your sets. And I can link a study here below that talks about this in depth if you wanna check out the study. But this study proved that to optimize hypertrophy, you should be resting two to five minutes in between your sets. So when you do a set of squats, for example, you should be waiting at least two minutes in between from when you finish that set to when you do the next set. And trust me, if you're working out with proper intensity, pushing yourself very close to failure, my friend, you are going to need at least two minutes of recovery in between. And if you don't, you, my friend, need to increase your intensity, lift heavier weight, and push yourself close to failure. Starting off the next tier, we're going to talk about nutrition. And the reason this comes in tier three is for a few reasons. You could have the best nutrition in the world, but if you do not have all of these things set up first, it's not gonna matter. You don't build muscle from your nutrition, you build muscle from your training. Also, when you are in the beginner stage, as long as you have a good program, you'll build muscle no matter what. You can build muscle in a calorie deficit, you can build muscle in a calorie maintenance, so on and so forth, right? When nutrition is really gonna matter, it is two points here. Number one, making sure you get enough protein. The amount of protein you should be eating is either, if you're trying to lose weight, Take your goal body weight in pounds, multiply that between 0.8 and one, and that's how many grams of protein you need to eat per day. So if you're trying to weigh around 150, eat around roughly 120 to 150 grams of protein per day. Or if you're trying to either gain weight or like body recomp, kind of like maintain your weight and build some muscle, I want you to take your current body weight in pounds and multiply that between 0.8 to one. So protein, it does matter because um, that's the only macronutrient that helps you build and retain lean muscle. Also after that, once you get past the beginner stage, the way you are going to optimize your muscle building is going into a calorie surplus. If you want to know what exactly your calorie surplus should be and the macros you need, because that's really important when you go into a calorie surplus to make sure you don't put on too much body fat. If you want to learn how to set all that up, I'll link a video here above because I've done an entire video on how to figure out your macros and your calories for your calorie surplus. But when you get into past the beginner stage, you want to make sure you are going into that calorie surplus in order to optimize muscle building. So that is for that tier. And honestly, this one I surprised myself with even. I was gonna actually put this one in tier number one, which is form and execution of the movement that you are doing. The only reason I did not put this in tier number one is just because, I don't know, I've seen just too many people who didn't have the best form and yet they somehow built muscle. So although my two cents, and again, I really wanna put this like over here in tier number one, I really believe you need to have the proper form and execution, especially if you're trying to build muscle. Because remember, you building muscle, it all comes down to, you know, again, these things over here, but like actually working the muscle. If you're doing a bicep curl and you're just like swinging the weight around, you're not putting that much stress on your muscle because remember, the weight that you use to lift is just a tool to create tension inside of your muscle. So if you're using a bunch of momentum and you have shitty form and this, that, and the other, how much tension are you actually putting in that muscle? Not much of any, to be honest with you. So form and execution, while I put it over there in tier number three, I really do believe it should be over here in tier number one because if you're doing a lat pull down, you want to perform the movement correctly to actually tax your lat muscle to make sure your lat muscle gets proper tension. If you're doing a side lateral raise, you want to actually perform the movement with the side lateral raise, not just swinging the weight around. So I'm a big believer of form and execution is going to play a major role whether you actually build muscle or if you're just kind of like swinging the weight around. Because even still, like you can have progressive overload, but if your form is shit, it's not gonna matter. So while I put it over there, I do think it's actually like a sneaky, like it actually should be over here. 
And last but not least in tier number three, I threw one more last one in there, which is going to be supplements. And if you, um, you know, if you couldn't tell, I I'm not the biggest supplement guy. Um, I've done an entire video on what supplements I think are worth it versus not worth it. Again, I can link that here above. You can just kind of check it out on my channel. Again, do you need supplements to build muscle? No, absolutely not. All of these things matter way more than you taking supplements to try to help you build muscle. If you don't have this shit down first, I don't give a fuck what supplements you take. It ain't gonna fucking help you. But if you do have all these things down, taking some supplements might give you an extra two, three, four percent added bonus. And really, the only main supplements I would recommend taking are protein, which like, is that a supplement? Yeah, I guess it is a supplement. Protein powder and creatine. Those two things are really the two biggest supplements I would recommend you taking. I can link the brand that I use here below. It's called Legion Athletics. I can link that brand here below if you want to try them out. Please feel free to go ahead. Um, you can like use my code and get like 20% off, but you don't have to use that brand. That's just a brand that I use and I, I trust and I work with. Um, so you can check that out here below. But if you don't have all this stuff in place, <laughs> I don't care if you buy a million of those fucking things. It ain't gonna, it's not going to matter in you building muscle. All right. So, wow, we just covered a lot in this video. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And really, if you learned something, I would love to hear about it. So please feel free to drop it below. I'm happy if I can help in any way, shape or form. And last but not least, if you are, uh, you know, if you just watch this entire video and you're like, holy shit, this is a lot of information. What I can say as well is I and my team do offer some coaching as well. So if you're interested in getting coaching from us, check the links here below in the description of this video. You will find all of that good jazz down there. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and we'll chat soon.